Hello, everybody. <laughs> Welcome back for another video. Hope you're all doing fantastic and that you're all having a wonderful day. A very big thank you to everyone who leaves a like, a comment, or who is a clicker of affiliate links. I do thank thee. Welcome back to another News I Missed, where I go over News I Missed. And without further ado, let's jump right into it. New York-based crypto trading platform Gemini claims to be the first one to have registered as a virtual asset service provider or a VOSP by the Central Bank of Ireland. Earlier in February of this year, a company received an electronic money institution authorization from the CBI. It was a CEMI from the CBI and not a VOSP. Sure. The news was reported on Gemini's official blog on Tuesday as Gillian Lynch, head of Ireland and European Union for Gemini, commented on the release. They said Gemini was focused on the ethos of asking for permission. Oh, so cringy. Not forgiveness, even cringier. Since day one, Gemini has engaged with regulators around the world to help shape thoughtful regulation that both protects consumers and fosters innovation. That part is not incorrect. Since 2013, 2014, they've made sure that they are like best friends with every single regulator, but it hasn't made them the number one exchange. So it's kind of like, well, you know, who kind of won? Individuals and institutions in Ireland now can access Gemini's exchange and custody services to buy, sell, and store over 100 cryptocurrencies along with the euro and the great British pound. The EU's fifth anti-money laundering directive, or 5AMLDABC, was transposed into Irish law in April 2021, making it illegal to operate in the country without the registration from the CBI and carry out due diligence on clients this for some reason when this news was released was incredibly popular news i feel like i'm not getting it if you remember the last week seven days esque uh we've had a flurry of news about companies who are buying crypto, the whales who are accumulating Bitcoin, the amount of Ethereum being taken off of exchanges, what have you. And they get like one article, maybe if they're lucky. Um, for some reason, this was like eight articles around the web talking about this. I don't think it's the most exciting thing in the world. I think it's great for crypto adoption that they are in another place legally, but I'm pretty sure people were using their website before just because that's how the internet works. You type in something and then you kind of go somewhere. Um, right, I don't. I never understand why like really boring news ends up always making uh, the most popular news out there, but alas, here we are. So congratulations to them on their paperwork. I assume it took them about a year and a half to be able to get it back. So I guess that's a win for the industry. That's the Gemini is now officially allowed to work in Ireland news. Fantastic. I mean, I can't wait to go to Ireland and then to go on to Gemini's website and finally be able to use them because I've been waiting for years for this. I'm going to move on now. Anyway, you know, let's move on. Also in, sure, that is a weird statue. That is a very, I thought that was a person, but that is a statue. Why, why, why is it that, why? I don't. The microstate of Andorra is looking to make crypto and central bank digital currency related moves with a legislative protocol proposal, the same thing, that could eventually see the country issue its own token. And despite an initial setback, could push to adopt crypto-friendly policies in the near future. The population of the Principality of Andorra is just around 78,000 people. But it has its own parliament and technically is independent from both Spain and France. I mean, not technically, it is. It is its own entity. Okay, the nation is sandwiched between uh, both France and Spain. For those of you who did not know that, you pass by it if you... 
Anyway, and the Andorran government has been keen to adopt a number of pro-crypto policies in recent months because I'm, if I'm not mistaken, I'm pretty sure Andorra is a tax haven, I think those are the words you could throw inside there. Um, I've heard from people and from internets, uh, it's apparently kind of one of the places to go if you want a lower tax rate and control over your own monies. Last year, it made its first moves to regulate the crypto operators that have a base in the country. And in April, per the news outlet Diari Andorra, okay, the ruling Democrats for Andorra Party put forth a proposal to allow the state to create its own token. They said the draft law made mention of what its authors called programmable digital sovereign money, that could serve as a means of payment and would be issued by the central bank or a sovereign government authority. It would also be intended for use by the general public and could be used to make government bond issuance, so a central bank digital currency. So this was really popular because Andorra, Jersey, what's the other place? Other country, all the little like island nations everywhere or the sovereign places or the tax haven places have been quite crypto-friendly in the last couple of years because they know exactly what's going on. So they're trying to get more people into their borders. Uh, a lot of the news floating around about this in particular were, 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 was, was like this, uh, that they're trying to make crypto-friendly laws. I've seen a couple. It's more of a, hey, come to our country in general because we have lower taxes and I can only assume the real estate's beautiful. I don't assume it's going to be ugly in a place with only 78,000 people, but this seems to focus more on the fact that they're trying to create their own central bank digital currency. And people kind of assume that the underlying previous laws that allowed people with crypto into the country or to do business there would kind of be furthered with the creation of their own uh, digital currency as well, which every country is doing. This is no longer a secret. They tried to lie to us for a number of years saying that this was not going to be a thing, but every government is doing it because they're figuring out logic. Um, but yeah, so cool. Yeah, Andorra. I've never been myself. I plan on going one day. It's not that. Anyway, um, wonderful. I can't wait to see them make their own digital sovereign money because I'm pretty sure that they've already done it in the background, but they're waiting for... Some type of a thumbs up from the International Monetary Fund and or the BIS uh, or the World Bank uh, to kind of say that they've done so. A, a number of other countries have already done so, but, you know, you know. All right. That's the Andorra news. That's a weird statue. I can't be the only one who's thinking it. Like It, it looks a little. Why is it that far? And let's move on. Also in the news, Shiba Inu has finally collaborated with an American virtual reality company. Is that what they're called? Oh, no, no. They're called The Third Floor, TTF, to design and develop their highly anticipated SHIB, the metaverse project. Here's a tweet for it right here. I remember the last couple of days. And even before the last weekend, we were like, whoa, Shiba Inu's price is moving up a lot. Why ever did it do that? And then we had news like a day or two ago that, what was going on? I think Shiba Inu passed by Tron and something else. And we keep getting indications. What is it? Like those maps about how popular Shiba Inu is. Apparently, don't scream at me for this one. It's apparently, I think, the number one coin over Dogecoin, I think Dogecoin has a higher market cap, but popularity wise, um, I think it's the I think it's ranked higher on Twitter than Dogecoin and other places as far as like the whole like Google search thing. Like we can see like when Bitcoin becomes more popular or when the price is going to go up because of the amount of people who are buying Bitcoin or searching for Bitcoin at that moment. And I think Shiba Inu has kind of taken the, the the number one spot of meme coins out there. In the blog post, the team behind the most popular, there we go, the most popular K9-themed cryptocurrency, SHIB, confirms that they have partnered with one of the largest visualization studios based in LA called The Third Floor, Inc., which contributes to the production of popular IPs across film, television, 
Video games, virtual reality, augmented reality, and location bait. They do a lot. Jeez Louise. While shedding some light on the role of the third floor, Shiba Inu's team explained that the American virtual reality company will help define and develop virtual environments, buildings, and landmarks for the true Shiba Inu-inspired universe. Landmarks. While utilizing its skills in verge visual development and storytelling, the world's leading visualization studio is also reported to develop a marketplace to inform final environmental production. And there's more words for it right there. So I cannot be the only one who can't imagine this in their minds. I want to know what this is going to look like. Because I, I kind of just picture like a, a, hear me out here. Just like grass and a whole bunch of dogs running around, I don't... Maybe I'm lacking imagination in my idea of metaverse. Uh, I don't know. Um, but sure. So, yeah, I guess this makes a lot of sense. There's been a lot of development from Dogecoin and Shiba Inu. As far as, like, just making sure that they're not really meme anymore. There'll be memes forever. It is, it, it is a literal cartoon Shiba Inu on the face of a coin, you can't get much more ridiculous than that. I mean, you actually can, like with like a, like a hot dog or like a flip flop or something like that. Anyway, uh, please don't make those. Please don't make those into real things because I worry about the universe already. So yeah, um, I guess it makes sense as to why the coin was maybe going up in price. We're going to see the development of the actual Shiba Inu coin metaverse project continue to rise. I think they have their own decentralized exchange. I'm not really sure. They just announced last week that they're launching four more coins. You got you got Bone, you got Dig, you got Treat. And what was the other one? Oh, they're also making their own stable coin. So a lot is going on. Uh, the, the energy is still there as well. I don't have it in this video as far as like how many coins are being burned. More Millions are being burned every single day. The mantra also remains uh, getting to the one cent Shiba Inu. I mean, it's mathematically possible. It's just a matter of when, at least for me. So I hope they make it. I mean, there's a lot going on. There's a lot of other, there's a lot of other like non-meme coin projects that don't even do half of what Shiba Inu and Dogecoin are doing. Like, let's be completely honest with ourselves. So good for them. I hope it works out. I guess we'll get news at some point of when it's going to be launching. And I hope it's pretty because if it looks gross, nobody's going to be there. Just making sure that designers know that because, you know, some metaverses now look like the word is basura. Anyway, that's the Shiba Inu news. Wonderful. Let's move on. Also in forever popular news until this thing goes away. The US SEC is unsurprisingly opposed to allowing attorney and XRP supporter John Deaton from participating in the Ripple lawsuit any longer. For those of you who haven't dug too deep into this, apparently there's like something called like an Amici. I think that's what it's supposed to be um, in this system where basically if people who are associated with or are trying to help in some sort of way, they're allowed to kind of jump on the back, if you will, of Ripple and help them during the actual um, court case. And apparently the SEC, or rather the people who've been helping Ripple allegedly have been doing quite well. And the SEC is kind of tired of it because they're supposed to be the only corrupt ones in the building. In April 2021, Deaton and five other XRP holders referred to as Movens. Movance. In the case documents, filed a motion to intervene in the case on behalf of all similarly situated XRP holders. So basically, they're saying, no, we're trying to join into this on behalf of other people who, you know, you can't fit all these people into one courtroom at once. U.S. District Judge Annalisa Torres said last October that while the XRP holders cannot intervene in the case, she will allow them to act as Amici Curie in the SEC's action against Ripple Labs, Inc. Amici Curie means friend of the court, according to the Cornell Law School. Amici Curie, I'm saying that terribly, can submit documents known as amicus briefs on issues relevant to the case as long as the court approves the briefs in advance. Then it talks about the actual lawsuit against them. Uh, there's XRP SEC lawsuit news every single 
day you don't understand they're like so many uh like official like high figurehead lawyers who are now like stepping in and giving what they're talking about uh there's a lot of people who do believe uh that ripple is kind of poised to win unless the judge is also uh corrupt as heck because the sec has no real case uh ripple keeps asking the sec to unseal documents nothing crazy if you have a case against us Please show why you have a case against us. And the SEC refuses to unseal these documents. I think a couple have been shown in court because the judge was like, no, I need to see these things. And apparently they were also still in Ripple's favor. Uh, so the one of the major headlines is right now is that the SEC doesn't want anyone helping Ripple because the SEC is terrible. I mean, we can't sugarcoat it any longer. Um, it's just kind of who they are and hopefully... Hopefully will not always be. I would love regulators who actually helped people who regulated to help the citizens as opposed to the SEC's own pockets, allegedly. I, I, I don't know the inner workings of it. I'm simply going off of the news that I've been going over the last six years. But, you know, the track record just ain't that good at this point. So, yeah, uh, the SEC is trying to <laughs> trying to remove 67,000 people from from helping Ripple in the case because... At this point, I wish the SEC would just give up. It's it's actually a little sad what they're doing. And this is why I, I think we see that they, for those of you who missed the news a couple days ago, that they're trying to start a lawsuit against eight other coins at the exact same time. You have nothing better to do with your time. Like, there's no other, like, actual non-crypto financial thing happening with 9% inflation that you can go and help people out with. It's this. All right. Let's move on. Yeah. I do hope that you've all enjoyed. I do hope that you all are having a great day, great morning, great afternoon, great evening, wherever you are, wherever you might be. Do hope is absolutely fantastic. Thank you all once again for liking, commenting, subscribing, or clicking affiliate links. And I will most certainly be talking to you all soon. See you. That bus is full. <laughs>